How's it going, everybody? Nerds Rising here, and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. In today's video, I have a very special treat for you guys because we are featuring some battles submitted to the channel by the one and only Dr. Love. Now, I know some of you guys do not know who Dr. Love is. Uh, some of you definitely do, but for those of you who do not, first of all, I want to say, Dr. Love, thank you so much, man. I'm always super thrilled to feature your battles because this man is a very, very high-level battler. He hits Legend every season, and on top of that, most seasons he ends up very high on the leaderboards. Last season, I believe he was in the mid-3500s, and he does so typically with some very unique signature teams that he calls his cold love lines. Now, what can be pretty unique about these teams, other than just the fact that he thinks of them himself rather than just copying another YouTuber, is he runs them a little bit differently than a lot of people. For example, I like to use a lot of ABB style teams, but he very often will use like ABA teams and other variations of teams that the back line is not the same typing and do have very different coverages. So this team is definitely no exception to that. As you see, he's running a double fairy team actually, but an ABA style fairy team. And the way he described playing this team basically is the Shadow Alola Ninetales has a very high win rate on the lead. So in neutral situations or even, even slightly negative situations, oftentimes he will just stay in and commit shields in order to try to win switch at all costs. And then once he has switch, his back line basically has near perfect coverage for each other and will just sweep the game. So he actually also specifically asked me not to watch these battles in advance. So I'm expecting to see some very nice gameplay, and I always do when it's Dr. Love. So that being said, we're going to be jumping right into these battles, and not only are we going to see a unique team and a unique play style, but we're just going to see some high-level plays because, again, regardless of what team you run, you have to be good at the game to get to 3,500 ELO. So without further ado, let's get into the battles. So getting into the first battle here, Dr. Love is leading his nine tails into a Tapu Fini, so fairly neutral. And again, like I said in the intro, in neutral situations, he typically will just stay in, commit shields, and work to win switch. So the opponent is just going straight for a surf here, but he is going to respect it. And the opponent then brings in a Shadow Drapion, which Shadow Drapion is just pretty scary in general. Um, they do let the Weather Ball go, and now that he's chipped this, he's going to bring in his Weezing. And even if they're running Sludge Bump, he should be able to take one pretty comfortably, and they're not even running Sludge Bump, so this is very, very good for him now. These non-stab Aqua Tails are just not going to be doing that much damage, and he could probably tank at least two more very comfortably, so just going to let these go, and I think that the opponent is just about in Brutal Swing range, and it looks like this actually was a CMP tie as well, so Weezing actually winning CMP over Drapion, and the opponent actually shields there, and Dr. Love again knows that he can tank an Aqua Tail, so just lets it go. And it looks like he is going to win CMP again, but the opponent actually makes a nice play there and pivots back into the Tapu Fini. So, actually going to pivot into the Jellicent this time. And I actually really like this play because this is a much better lead than the Ninetales lead. And may actually commit a shield here on this. Again, he does like to commit shields early and just keep his Mons very healthy. And the Tapu Fini really not applying much pressure with the water guns here. So going to throw the Surf here, takes out the Tapu Fini, and the opponent still has a shield. But his A9 is super healthy, and his Jellicent has a lot of energy as well. And the opponent brings back in the Drapion. So this is making me think that they must be very weak in the back to the Jelly. And they shield as well. And despite this being super effective from a Shadow, he can tank this Crunch and probably farm down. And the opponent actually has a Steelix in the back. So... Not what I was expecting to see here, so this is going to be very close, but get some nice chip damage with the Shadow Ball. I think he should still be okay, unless they're running like Heavy Slam or something, and they just go straight for a Psychic Fang, so probably running Psychic Fangs and Crunch, and despite this being an Ice Fairy type into a Steel type, I think he has this game because one more Psychic Fangs is not going to KO, and he is double resisting these Dragon Tails, so I think he should... He might just barely get outpaced. No, it's going to be a CMP tie. It is a CMP tie. And the A9 wins CMP against the Steelix and takes it out with a Weather Ball. And even if he gets taken out there, Jellicent can probably do like one or two more hexes and take that game. So very nicely played in game one. And in game two, we're actually facing another Tapu Fini. So 
probably going to see him play this out very similarly. Just stay in, commit shields, and try to win switch if at all possible. And we'll have to see if the opponent decides to switch out in this game. And he does get baited with a surf, but again, he was probably going to shield the surf anyway. And going to just go straight for a weather ball here because I think even if they no shield this, he probably just KOs with like one more charm. And they do actually shield. So going to shield himself and going to charm all the way down and, excuse me, and now is going to have switch advantage, and we'll have to see if switch advantage is going to pay off, and it absolutely is, because they are running a Trevenant in the back, and probably going to get this shield back, does get the shield back, and now looks like the opponent is going to have to throw, because he would have gotten to another Weather Ball, and has done some very nice chip damage as well, so probably very close to Brutal Swing range now on this Wheezy. So going to bring it in, all shields are down, and I don't think that one... One Shadow Ball definitely does not KO this Weezing. So, gonna get to the Brutal String, just gets it off right away. And gonna have to eat a Shadow Ball here. But again, I think that Weezing can probably tank this pretty comfortably. And it does. And the opponent actually has an Obstagoon in the back, which is very scary. And this is a CMP tie. I don't think this move would KO anyway, but does get some very, very valuable chip damage onto this Obstagoon. And now, despite them having Obstagoon into the Jellicent, since that the uh, surf update here i think this should be a gg because two surfs should just about ko this uh, obstagoon here so i think the opponent basically has to hope for a boost here and they don't get it and they realize it's over and they surrender so very good game there i think if they did boost there that could have gotten a little bit tricky but the fact that they don't boost the opponent just knew that two surfs was going to ko and they just surrender there so Facing into a, an Ultra League Galvantula here, you love to see th some of these crazy XLs that opponents are running in. They actually don't bait. I think he tried to call a lunge bait there, but they actually just full sent the discharge, and that actually did quite a bit of damage. And then they pivot into a Jellicent here, so... Uh, knows he can take a Shadow Ball here, so not sure he's going to commit a shield here. Um, does actually commit the shield, so maybe just calling that they were going to be unlikely to bait on the first one. And that is nice, despite the fact that Weezing could have survived it. It is very nice to shield early sometimes because opponents, especially at higher elos, are going to be unlikely to bait on the first move on very bulky mon. So, does actually get a shield with a Brutal Swing there and now doesn't want to go down two shields right away. Gonna just let the Shadow Ball go and the opponent actually baited with a Bubble Beam. Absolute savage by the opponent there. Um, and goes for another Brutal Swing and the opponent actually shields. So, I don't even think he's in Shadow Ball range so can probably still let this go and Weezing hangs on, and they bring back in the Galvantula, and just wants to get this Brutal Swing off right away and get his Switch Clock back up, and the, that Brutal Swing actually did way more than I was expecting, despite being debuffed, and then one Charm actually KOs, and they bring back in the Jelly, and he Charm farms down, and they had a Mandibuzz in the back, and that is another GG. So very nicely played in Game 3, and Game 4 we're facing into a defense Deoxys in the Ultra League, and that is a very, very expensive investment by the opponent. And gonna shield the Cycle Boost here, and then the, the opponent's probably gonna dip out, and they do dip out into a Mandibuzz here, so despite us being a Fairy-type into a Dark-type, it is unfortunate that we're not running a Fairy-type charge move, because these overheats are gonna just continuously debuff our attack, and really, as you see, that one overheat didn't even do half, so probably would need, like, at least two, maybe three more overheats to KO this, this Mandibuzz here. So, gonna go for the overheat now. And then I'm wondering if he actually might pivot back out of here. And he does do just that. I like this play a lot. Since the opponent waited a little bit to switch out, their switch clock is not up. So he's actually able to bring in the A9 here and just snipe this Mandibuzz. So I really like that play. What are they gonna come back in with is the question here. Um, they do actually bring back in the DD. So, since they're bringing back in the DD... This does make me think that they may be running Rock Slide. So, throws the Weather Ball on the CMP tied to a potential Rock Slide here. And the opponent actually commits a shield. So, they must be weak to this A9 in back. So, he is going to shield the A9. Probably recognizing that they're weak in back here. And going to just get the Weather Ball off right away. And then I wonder if we will see him actually pivot back out of here. And again, very nicely managed by Dr. Lud there. Just recognizing based on how the opponent was playing that his Shadow A9 very likely had some play in the back. So rather than just staying in and letting the DD take him out, he pivots into the Jelly to lure out that Mon in the back. And it's a very good decision because it's actually a Scrafty, and Scrafty would get absolutely mutilated by the Ninetales. So 
The nice thing here as well is that despite this not being too great for the jelly, now that it has Surf, it can actually do some meaningful damage to the Scrafty, because as you see, gets to three Surfs and nearly takes out the Scrafty, which is absolutely crazy, because again, this is previously a horrible matchup for the jelly set, and now, does he bring back in the Ninetales? No, he actually brings in the Weezing, expecting the opponent to hard swap into the DD, and gets to the Brutal Swing, and then snipes with one charm, and now the opponent is going to surrender, and that's a GG. So very well played in that battle, and we're leading into a Trevenant in the next battle, and the opponent is going to pivot into a Drapion here, so doesn't have a clear response to the Drapion, as we saw before, and they actually are running Sludge Bomb here, so I don't know how many Sludge Bombs KO's a Weezing, probably two nearly does, so it actually looks like he's just going to stay in here, shield, and probably look to fully charm down here, and this does make quite a bit of sense, because once he has switch advantage, then he can align his Weezing onto that Trevenant, and Weezing has a pretty nice matchup against Trevenant, as you saw earlier, so does go down shields, but does have quite a bit of energy, and does have switch as well, and the opponent has another Dark Poison type in the back, so very nice to have switch here, um, and this A9 is just putting in so much work, holy crap guys, gets the Skun Tank to half health, gets a shield, and gets to another Weather Ball, and nearly just straight, just KOs the Skun Tank, so Shadow Alone and Ninetales has basically KO'd two full health months and gotten both shields, and brings in the Jelly, and the opponent does not throw, and they bring in the Trevenant, but Jellicent is very bulky, should be able to shrug off this Shadow Ball, and it does, and I do not think that Trevenant can tank a Shadow Ball from the Jelly, and they can, they actually do on 1 HP, but then snipes with the Weezing, and now should be in a great position, because I'm not even sure that this will get to two Sludge Bombs, and they're actually running Flamethrower, so now can get to the Brutal Swing, and that is going to be a GG. So very well played again by Dr. Love. Very cool team by the opponent as well, but just managed his energy very, very well there. And that is another GG. So into the next battle here, we have a wall rain lead, so fairly neutral. And again, sorry about all the water drinking, guys. My allergies are just wrecking me right now. Uh, I'm not going to complain any more than that, but yeah. Sorry about the cuts in the video to drink water and yeah. Anyway, uh, he did get baited there by the Icicle Spear, so pretty unfortunate. But again, we know he likes to commit shields, and hopefully he can get a shield back, but the opponent is a savage and calls the bait, and may actually shield again. Yeah, gonna respect an EQ, and the opponent fortunately does not bait twice, so does go down two shields, but does get the wall rain very low, and then the opponent pivots into a Shadow Swamper Dan without any shields remaining. This is very, very scary, and tried to catch a Hydro there, but the opponent does over farm, and now... Jelly is going to have to tank a lot of damage here and going to just get the Surf off right away. Doesn't want to risk over farming and potentially not get the energy off and does actually grab a shield. I think the opponent may have been able to EQ there before he got to the Surf. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. But they do decide to actually shield and then over farm massively. And now just going to bring in the A9 and just has to sack it basically because if he brings in the Weezing, his Weezing just gets one shot with the EQ. And since he forces them to throw, yeah, they weren't going to make an EQ there, so they're actually forced to switch out, and they bring in a Trevenant to the Weezing, and Trevenant basically gets one-shotted by the Overheat and doesn't even get to a Seed Bomb, and now Weezing still has a lot of work to do. The Swampert does have, I believe, four, or they had, yeah, they had four, so they were at six there, so they knew they weren't going to make the EQ, and they very nicely there throw on CMP to prevent him from over-farming, and now, the question is going to be, can he outpace this wall rain? And he wins CMP on the Icicle Spear. Oh my gosh, what a game. I really was not sure there, after he had to go down two shields on the lead, if he was going to be able to pull that off. But he does pull it off, and picks up a very nice win. So GG there, and the dream lead in the next battle. And the opponent pivots into their own A9, but this one's actually running Powder Snow, so... This is actually a pretty nice situation for Dr. Love. Gonna bait, knowing that even if it gets called, it's still gonna do a decent amount of damage, and that's exactly what happens. And I do actually like the play of staying in here. Shields is a Gleam, and since he has a second Fairy-type in the back in the Weezing, 
doesn't really need to align this to the Dragonite. So I can totally see why he stayed in there. And oh my gosh, the opponent has a Shadow Machamp in back. The opponent is running ABA weak to Fairy. And Dr. Love has two Fairies on his team and nearly KOs the Machamp before they even get to two moves. And at this point, I think you just bring in the Jealous in here and just farm down, lure back out the Dragonite and just gonna stay in here and just save the very very healthy wheezing for the Machamp in the back and the opponent shields the Surf they're in shambles they don't even know what's waiting for him in the back and I'm not even sure if a Dragon Claw KOs here so they're probably gonna have to superpower oh my gosh the opponent is running Draco Meteor he brings in the wheezing they see the wheezing and they just stop attacking and yeah they're just gonna let him fully farm down and they have a Shadow Machamp in the back so opponent not really sure if you're running Shadow Dragonite on the lead, you probably need to have a better answer to Fairy in the back than a Shadow Machamp. So, wow, GG to the opponent there. And Shadow Swampert lead here in the next battle. So pretty scary, honestly. Very likely going to get baited with a Hydro, but knows he likes to maintain health on the A9. So does shield the Hydro. And the opponent actually brings in a Registeel here. So this is actually a little bit tricky for his team because can't just directly bring in the jelly otherwise his jelly just gets absolutely destroyed so looks like he's actually going to tank a move here and then maybe look to bring in the wheezing yeah brings in the wheezing here and because of the because of forcing the opponent to dump energy there will actually make it to the overheat before a potential zap cannon comes through it actually was a cmp tie as well so very nice recognition there by by dr love to know how much energy the opponent had because if he brings in the wheezing right away he runs the risk of potentially getting zap cannon debuff and that would make his overheat do a lot less damage so does throw the double resistant overheat there doesn't ko and the opponent very nicely there over farms and throws just before he gets to the brutal swing and now even though he doesn't maintain switch here he does get this thing very very low and unfortunately, they do get to another Zap Cannon just before he makes the Surf. So gonna have to shield this. And now he's down shields. And this is looking a little bit tricky here. So fortunately, does over farm. And actually gonna fully no bubble this as well. And I like that play very much. Gets an extra Hex and now has the Shadow Ball. The opponent brings back in the Swampert. And gonna probably force their last shield here with a Surf. And they do. And then makes the snipe with the A9. Absolutely beautiful play there. This will KO the Swamper. And what's going to be in the back? Actually going to be a Talon Flame. And they get two Incinerates in. And this is really, really scary. They are now at four Incinerates. I don't think a Brave Bird KOs here. So they probably have to go Flame Charge Brave Bird. And they get the Incinerate through. And they are now one Incinerate away can he make it to two serves and he does make it to two serves just before they get the energy in another very close game i was not sure he was going to win that one but very nicely played there by dr love and we are moving into the next game and a buzz will lead there very cool and again i'm sorry guys i'm drinking more water i'm in shambles and the opponent brings in a ready rock so probably has to shield this just gonna stay in it looks like for now Maybe just shield this and then pivot out, but actually is staying in and going to throw a move here. So wants to chip this thing first, and the opponent actually shields, so that ends up working out very nicely. And now can bring in the Jellicent, <clears throat> excuse me, and just tank whatever they throw. Uh, Stone Edge doesn't even do half, so can over farm here. They're already at another Stone Edge, but doesn't matter. The lock-ons are doing one damage, and the nice thing here is that after he KOs, they're not going to really be able to bring back in their Buzzwool, which will basically force the Buzzwool to be aligned to the A9 in the endgame. Um, they actually do make it to another move at the last second, so that's really unfortunate. Going to have to give up the second shield, and they actually are going to bring back in that Buzzwool, probably just recognizing that it has no play against the Shadow A9, and that does a lot of damage, and I really like this play. He has two fairies, so no reason really to stay in and let him get himself get farmed down there. So pivots into the wheezing, and that lures out a shadow reg ice. And I don't think that a shadow blizzard KOs the wheezing here, so we'll have to see. It's going to be very close. It does not KO, and now is going to get to the next overheat. This is debuff, but this is still going to do so much damage, and it takes the reg the reg ice very very low. 
and they're forced to throw energy and this I believe should be a GG. I think he can just bring in the Jellicent here, make it to a move and then just farm down the Buzzwool with the A9. And yeah, does get to the Surf, this should KO and then he can just hard swap into the A9 and just destroy this Buzzwool because even if Buzzwool gets to a superpower, it would not be enough and that is a GG. So very well played so far by Dr. Love and I believe there are like probably three battles left. So has a Jellicent lead here in the next battle and not the best situation for Dr. Love here but probably going to commit a shield on the potential Shadow Ball and the, the opponent this time does not bait which is very nice and going to over farm just before they get to another Shadow Ball and this time not risk the bait. Go for the Psy Shock and unfortunately it doesn't KO and they do make it to another Shadow Ball. Is he going to double shield here? No, he's going to let it go knowing he can survive. And despite going down shields, does maintain switch, but the opponent brings in an A9 and actually going to pivot into the wheezing here. Maybe just wanting to save his A9 for the end game. Maybe calling that they are going to be weak in the back to it. And this is a charm A9 as well, and they're not switching out. This is really not a good matchup for the A9. They are running Psy Shock, but just really not the best situation and I think they did catch onto something and it's a scrafty oh my gosh so very very nicely played again recognizing that the opponent stayed in in a neutral lead and that there could be something in the back that was not wanting to see his a9 and by pivoting into the wheezing there allows his a9 to get some more play snipes the scrafty and now Jellicent has a very comfortable matchup as we saw on the lead with the in the one shielding scenario with the A9. So at this point, I think you just probably shield up here and just commit to two Shadow Balls and actually just lets it go knowing his Jellicent is just so dang bulky that he can tank all these moves, throws the Shadow Ball, and yeah, the opponent realized their only win con there was to call a Surf and they get nuked by the Shadow Ball. So GG there. And the dream lead here in the next battle, a Verizion, and they bring in a Shadow Charizard, and he has the perfect response to the Shadow Charizard. Not going to mess around over farming, just going to go right for the Surf here. And a Shadow Blast Burn will hurt, but Jellicent just shrugs off the damage. And I don't even think the Surf will quite KO, so probably will get some extra farm. And the opponent actually shields there, so very interesting. This is just a Dragon Claw but doesn't want to take any chances with the opponent over farming and potentially picking back switch there. So I think if he lets that go, they could probably double shield and farm down and now probably going to double shield himself and just secure alignment here because definitely once his his A9 on that Verizion and the opponent actually recognizes that they were going to lose switch and they actually save the Charizard for later. But the unfortunate thing for the opponent is they are, again, locked into this A9. But Verizion does actually have access to Stone Edge, but they're not running it. So I was going to say, actually, Stone Edge there would definitely one-shot the A9. So a little bit risky there by the uh, by Dr. Love bringing back in the uh, A9 there. But fortunately, shrugs off the Sacred Sword, and they have an Aurorus in the back. So I think he should be okay here because they're going to be forced to Meteor Beam here. And then... I think that he can bring in his Galarian Weezing and probably outpace to a Brutal Swing. So we'll have to see how he decides to play this. Does bring in the Weezing. I think that he should just get there before and actually try to catch there. And the opponent goes for the farm down. And this Surf will be KOing. And I think that after this Hex or two here, this thing should be in Brutal Swing range. And actually... I think he's recognizing here that he can just tank the brutal, the uh, Meteor Beam here and just play it safe and go for the overheat. And yeah, that's exactly what he does. Gonna overheat this Aurorus and that is gonna be a G to the G. And this is the last battle, guys. So Dr. Love putting on a clinic for us as usual, showing us some very, very cool mons that you probably don't see very often. Because again, this is actually a triple XL team and none of these mons are really super common in the Ultra League right now. So. He has a Shadow Ampharos lead here, and it looks like the opponent is massively over farming. I'm pretty much sure they're going to go for a Thunder Punch here, and they do, but he should be able to just double shield. And the opponent actually got greedy there over farming, and they get KO'd by a Charm, so doesn't even have to commit both shields there. And they bring in a Trevenant to a loaded A9, so they must be so weak to this A9 in the back. And if they're weak to the A9 in the back you know that they're probably going to be weak to the Galarian Weezing. So 
Galarian Weezing looking super strong to close here. And gonna bring it in here. And probably gonna respect a Shadow Ball. Just go straight for the Brill Swing. Get rid of this Trevenant. And actually does let the Shadow Ball go there. Maybe trying to call the bait. And the opponent has a Shadow Zapdos in the back. So this is actually a little bit scary. I don't think one overheat KOs. So just gonna play it safe and go for the double Brutal Swing here. And double Brutal Swing, definitely gonna KO. And I think probably will hard swap into the Jellicent as soon as this Shadow Zapdos goes down. And that actually didn't KO, but now has an energy lead. And as we saw earlier, the Jellicent can tank a Shadow Ball from the Trevenant. And probably not even gonna have to, because this Surf probably will just about KO. And it does, and the opponent surrenders. And that is a very well-played set of battles by Dr. Love. This was his team that he used to climb to Expert this season, and I wouldn't say it's necessarily super accessible, but I think that any three of these Mons could be very, very strong if you guys were looking to build a team around them, especially the Shadow A9 lead, guys. That thing is just an absolute insane beast. So thank you to everyone for watching. At the time of this recording, we are at 496 subscribers. We are so, so close to 500. So thank you guys all in advance so much for your support. And thank you as always to Dr. Love for sending in some absolutely insane battles with a very, very unique signature cold love line. And that being said, thanks again to everyone. If you are not subscribed, consider doing so because the more subscribers we can get, the more Pokemon my wife will let me play. Recognize all you've come to. Recognize all you've come to. Recognize all you've come to.